Yay Networks. Hey guys, episode 60. This is part two with Bert Dubrow. We, these are like the best stories, but we're going to get into the Jerry Springer. That's what I was waiting on because that's like my childhood. Wow. Now like we're like getting into the watching. Jordan years. Yeah, 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 the Jordan years watching <laughs> Jerry. I remember... Um, you know the infomercials? They have the Jerry Springer VCR sure. tapes. The yeah. Too Hot for TV. I got him. Jerry Springer. I got him. My dad was that I, guy that ordered I those. got him. I still <laughs> well, have them. Your dad, really? I have them too? I was yeah. not allowed to watch yeah. it because you could see like the nude stuff. But what I wanted to ask you is yeah. with Jerry Springer, mm-hmm. when it started, it wasn't no. the fighting. So how did that become with the fighting and bringing people on and just the guest. Well, yeah. A certain type of guest you Because <laughs> we ended on Sally Jesse Raphael the last episode. Let's get into that transition of when you left Sally and then kind of went on with Jerry. Okay. Well, the interesting part of this is that I knew Jerry before I knew Sally. Because when I was in Cincinnati doing that Bob Braun show. Cincinnati, yeah. And if they didn't watch the last week's show, then... Tough because you should have watched. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so any, anyway, <laughs> anyway, what ha- what happened was I'm doing the Bob Braun show in Cincinnati, and Jerry was the uh, Jerry years before this was the mayor of Cincinnati, right? Which a lot of people don't know, right? He was the mayor. Jerry was a brilliant. You told me and I didn't know that. Jerry yeah. is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant man. But anyway, um, so Jerry was hired to do editorials on the news while I was in Cincinnati. And this show that I'm doing in Cincinnati, we would have Jerry on to promote the news. So I got to know Jerry very well. We got to be great friends. So I knew him before. I wanted to do a show with him, but the Sally thing just happened and, and took off. So about five years into that, after the Emmy Award, actually, Walter Bartlett, who was the CEO of the company, came to me in New York and said, to, we're standing on the corner of 57th and 9th Avenue, and said, look, your contract is up. Um, we'd like to renew it and we'd like to give you a little more money, whatever the heck it was. And I said, don't. I don't want to do that yet. Let me do something else. What? Do you, what I want to do another show. You're, you're turning down the contract? I said, well, it's not that I'm turning down the contract, but I want it to be part of it. I want to do another show. Do you have any idea what you want to do? I said, yes. What do you want to do? I said, I want to do a show with Jerry. Now, of course, Walter knew Jerry because he was in Cincinnati and ran the company, et cetera, CEO. It's Jerry. Now, Jerry at this point was the, the head anchor at WLW Channel 5 in New York. Like like Kyle would be... Head oh, he left Cincinnati and went to New York? No, no. I'm, did I say New York? Yeah. No, Cincinnati. Okay, yeah, Cincinnati. yeah. The last thing in the world a station wants is for you to take away their main anchor. They make all their money from the news. So uh, this was not thrilling to Walter that I said this, that I wanted to do a talk show with Jerry. How Was Sally not thrilled either, I'm guessing? Uh, get there. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're guessing nicely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, Walter listened to me, and he said, look, I'm going back to Cincinnati. Don't say anything to anybody. So I said, okay. And then that night, I thought about it. I said, wait a minute. He's going to go there and tell Jerry. It was like his idea, not mine. So I called Jerry. And Jerry said, you're too late. No. <laughs> Walter already said so, but he said, Jerry said, I knew. He said, I knew it was you, because we would chat about the right. once in a while. And um, so the other reason that I wanted to do that show was I was lucky, had some luck and some success with Sally. I did not want to be a one-trick pony. Didn't want to do that. I wanted to, and, I, and this was ego, too, that I wanted to be able to say, I did at least two. So um, the company said yes, and we began the Springer show in Cincinnati, Ohio. Same studio as the Bob Broad show, by the way. We Same one. And you're right. Jordan, you're right. Jordan, you're absolutely right. It was straight, a straight show. It was really sort of a, not mentioned, but sort of a replacement for Donahue. If Donahue could, had been on so many years, and I thought Jerry could be that and, and more in terms of being funny, etc. No one was going to ever touch Phil, but as good as Phil was. Um, anyway, um, we started the show, straight lay show, um, nothing unusual about it, didn't, wasn't doing particularly well, but we had a great sales department. Tom Shannon, who was our sales guy, came to me one day and said, look, 
NBC, the NBC owned and operated stations are going to come in and they want to talk about the Sprinter show. And I thought to myself, really? And why? But okay. So they came in and they offer us the following deal. If you will move the show to Chicago, away from Cincinnati, to the NBC station in Chicago, we'll give you all the NBC owned stations, which were five or six stations. Well, who's going to say no to that? Right. So we moved the show to Chicago, to the NBC station there, and we began it. And one day, um, we were doing a show on race, and um, there were five people up on home base. Oh, let me back up. Hold on. I, it turns out I was the only person doing two talk shows at, of these shows at once. I didn't know this, but somebody, CBS, called and said, Bert's the only person doing these two shows. We want to do a story on him on 48 Hours, which I think is still on the air. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 48 Hours. Yeah. yeah. And so they asked me, and I said, yeah, okay. So they came to the house and watched Lynn and the kids in the morning, and what did I do when I was on the phone with Sally and all that yeah. stuff that ridiculous, but anyway. Did it. And then, <laughs> well, it was. I mean, how do you act normal when there's CBS camera? <laughs> you want eggs? You know, I did that. So, so anyway, um, they follow me to, to the studio. They put a mic on me, you know, a love, lovelier mic, and watch me in the studio and what I'm doing in production. Me, you go, oh, fine. And so about two weeks later, um, yeah, I think it was about two weeks later. Oh, hold on. During that time when we were there, it goes back to what you said a bit ago. I want to make sure I capture this. Um, you asked me if Sally right. enjoyed, like, that I was going to do Jerry. So now I said to Sally, CBS people, they want to talk to you too. So we're literally standing in her office, literally in her office, handheld camera. I'm behind the camera. And they say, I'm right there. I'm as close as I am to you, Jerry. Say to Sally, what do you think of Bert doing the Jerry Springer show? And she goes, well, would you like it? It's like a divorce. And she goes to this whole thing about being divorced. I'm standing there. It's not like she's sneaky. She's saying <laughs> right in front of me. And uh, and so when they stopped it, and I made sure they stopped, I said, are you kidding me? You know, she, we're, she and I laughing. And it, But she did say that. And she was, so to answer your question, she was not happy. But she also understood that I wanted to spread my wings. Okay? So anyway, now we go to about two weeks later, Chicago. Um, same deal. They put a lot of on me. No issues. That particular day, no planning at all because of 48 hours. It had nothing to do with 48 hours. We did a show. We were doing a show on race. In the middle of the show, guy stands up. You've seen this clip. Yeah. This guy stands up, walks over to the other guy, punches him right in the face, and the guy goes down. And you like, didn't know that was going We had happen? no idea. To, well, to the point we stopped the tape. Jerry ran. I didn't even find Jerry ran. I don't know where he went. He, he uh, left. Like, oh yeah, he, he uh, yeah he left. He was yeah he was you know, a lover, not a fighter. And I, I I talked to the audience. Jerry did. Jerry got the microphone. We talked to him. He said we're sorry and blah blah blah. Well, the next day or two, we looked at the overnights overnight. Radio. Did you finish the taping? We finished the taping. Yeah. And you left that in the edit, obviously. Yes, that was. And it. There was yeah. no. Uh, what was the bodyguard? Steve. Steve. No, yeah, there's no bodyguard then. No, uh, no, there wasn't. But that, there was a reason to have a bodyguard. I don't think there was. I wouldn't. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think okay. so. But anyway, um, either way, we saw something there, and we dis- we we began to figure that out for lack of a better way to put it. Now there are many people who will take credit for this all happening, and I don't take the credit. Jerry, if he were here, wouldn't take the credit. It happened. If we were smart at all, we saw it and saw the ratings, thought, how do we capitalize on this? So we started experimenting with things. And in the middle of this, our executive producer, Terry Murphy, left to go do um, the Gordon Elliott show. And um, so I came in and took over. Now, I had a gentleman that I hired from the beginning. His name was Richard Dominic, and um, he was there. And I always said to Richard, at some point, I'll make you the EP. Because every other week, he wanted to leave. And and he he he, did, he wanted to leave. So anyway, I came in at this point and took over. We had a May rating book coming up, and I said, "Look, everything's up. Everything's on the table. Just I don't care what the idea is. Tell me what it is, and we'll try different things." So um, we did. And one of the ideas I remember was um, there was a lady in Sacramento somewhere who was living in her car with her teenage daughter, and it, it and so the one of the producers came to me. They read the story and said. 
can we go to you know San Diego, whatever it was, and um, do the show from there? And I don't know what made me say this. I said, no, bring the car here. Bring she, her daughter, and the car here in the studio. And so we did. I the car? What, yeah. That they were sleeping in? Yeah. That car. How'd studio. you get it over in there? In the studio. We got it there. I don't remember how we got it. We got it there. I walked in the studio. I felt like it was at the Price is Right. <laughs> that's what, that's the car that's what is there. Car. Wow. So anyway, Man, different times. I thought totally. it would be an yeah. interesting show. So we started the show with Jerry and the, the woman, the mother, in the front seat of the car. And the daughter, <laughs> daughter was in the back seat. And now, still, I thought it was going to be interesting. Well, what happened, that again, we did not plan. The audience started to just beat the living hell, not physically, uh, uh, verbally abuse her. woman, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing this to your daughter. They're screaming at her, yelling at her. Go to break it, Jerry. Look at me like, oh. So we just let it go. Yeah, we let it go. And those kinds of shows eventually became what you now know as the Jerry Springer Show. And and what we did, a lot of people did not see this around the country, is we had what we called then CARTS, C-A-R-T-S, cartridges, where we would you'd hear, if you're having a, a fight with your mate, but it's a, it's a serious fight, serious relationship, call 1-800-JERRY right now. I grew yeah. up in Chicago. So I know. saw those all the time. So you know. Yeah, okay. But to see around the rest of the country, they didn't see that. Oh, okay. They started just locally in Chicago. Eventually went all over the place. So that's how we get our guests. Now, in the beginning, we sort of had to train the guests and, you know, show them what to do or how to do it. And then eventually... What's so the you show? knew they were going to fight. Well, we knew there was going to be some explosions, yeah. Okay. We didn't necessarily know in the beginning exactly what would happen. Yeah. But once it became what it became, you weren't writing in unless you knew what you were going to do. Right. right. You weren't coming in there, you know, and sing happy birthday. That wasn't going to happen. Right. <laughs> so I remember one show, we had this um, family, and it was at the, we called it the Thanksgiving show. And we knew this family was pretty crazy. And I had gotten a deal from Giorgio Armani for Jerry to do, wear Giorgio Armani clothes. And he loved this, loved it. And he and I would always walk to the studio together. We were walking to the studio. Now, I knew what show we were about to do, and I thought about it. I said, mm-hmm. I said Jerry, you know what? Don't wear that suit. Just put another one. His wife said, just shut up. Go put a, you know, sir, other suit on. I didn't want to ruin that suit. I knew there was going to be a food fight. There was no question. Because we had a big table. You set it all up. Yeah. Well, we had a big table and food, and these people hated each other, this family. Well, there we go. And <laughs> so, of course, that's what happened. And, ex- you know, exploding. They're throwing food at each other, everything. And I remember the first break, Jerry came and he said, God, now I know why you don't want me, you know, wanted me to change. And it just went from there. And then eventually Richard Dominic took over as the EP and clearly took it to a, another level. Another oh, level. Was, yeah. yeah and, and I give him credit for doing that. Um, and the show just exploded. Um, and that's how the whole Springer show. And happened. Jared Springer was on what, 20 years? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's so, yeah. Um, uh, it was, listen, there was a Jerry Springer opera in London. It, it, it got crazy. And Jerry didn't really know what hit him. He didn't know, but we all figured out what to do. And then eventually it just happened. You know, it goes and goes and goes. And you produce around it. And you start, you know, right. Guinea would give the guys who wanted to drink a beer, a little scotch or something. Yeah, okay, fine. But eventually we didn't have to do that. They came in. They and knew. most of these people, or a lot of these people, never been on an airplane, never stayed in a hotel. Yeah, I mean, you know, and they came on. Next thing you know, one's a guy ripping his wig off, and they, you know, yeah, you want to reach your edges? Come on out, you know, and all that. But yeah, it didn't start out that way. So there was never a meeting. I always like to say there was never a meeting where we said let's do fights. It it it, it just evolved. And then the Richard and the whole staff got smart enough uh, to figure out how to do it, and then it became a circus. When it was in that middle ground, is when it was difficult. Because people were getting offended, and we're ruining society, and we were screwing up everything, and that was tough. I had to defend that. Right. I, I was the one that would go on all the cable talk shows and and defend it, and I was pretty good at defending it until I uh, Bill O'Reilly called and um to Jerry to be on 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 uh, whatever Bill O'Reilly show was then Fox, and um he couldn't do it, so Jerry called me and said, "Would you do it? Oh, I can't boy. do it." So I didn't even think about it. I said, "Sure, yeah, I'll do it." So I was so used to, you know, defending it on other shows and um so anyway i, I w- was actually i was at a remote location but i did it f- 
from there. I remember Bill in my ear. Thanks, Bernard. I really appreciate it. Uh -oh. You know, yeah, I really appreciate it. You know, and I knew him not well, but I knew him. And then five, four, three, two, one. All of a sudden, he's killing me. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, it was so it was so bad that I got into. I was with my friend Paul Fusco. We got into the car. To Who go does home. Alf? Who's Alf? Yeah, yeah. We're, you know have, Alf. To, to go have Paul. So oh. we were going to have dinner, and we had just finished the show. It was live. You know the. Bill O'Reilly thing. And I get in the car and my cell phone rings and it's my mother and I hear her go, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was worried about me. But, you know, look, um, it was an incredible experience. All the producers deserve all the credit. I mean, they they did an amazing job. And How many it, Emmys did you win on uh, that? Well, there was no Emmy. There's no they Emmy. You couldn't give it. You couldn't give it Emmy, Emmy, Emmy Award to a show that was messing up the culture of America. I mean, but I remember how popular it was not only around the country but in Chicago. And I was just coming up at that time, and I wanted to get into television. I finished college, and I always wanted to get into that industry. But again, like you said, even that time, I played football and stuff. It wasn't really cool to go into theater. Yeah, yeah. But I remember right. being in Chicago, and it's like, what's filming here? Before I went to L.A., and I tried to get on Jerry. Springer because they'd always he'd always take questions from the audience I'm like sure. I just want to get on TV and I couldn't get a Jerry Springer ticket so I went to Jenny Jones instead which yeah. was next door and other I got on the there yeah, yeah. Other, Jenny was on the other side the of other the side of the wall yeah we right. would do like Monday Wednesday she'd do Tuesday Thursday Friday right uh, yeah yeah so what a weird circle it, we're in a but you listen you, you can't it's hard to talk about this without saying what an, and you know this because you I had him come to do DBL what an amazing man he was. I mean, yes. he was just, he was not the guy. I mean, they used to call him the ringmaster, and, and there was a movie, you know, film about that, him being the ringmaster. And I don't know that the show ever could have done what it did without Jerry, because he knew when to go in, he knew when to go out, he knew when to talk, when not to talk. He never looked at himself for a moment as the star of that show, ever. It was all about them. And he did that, you know, I mean, I in the beginning, he had never done anything like this. I Somewhere... I have a tape, a videotape, of me teaching him how to do all that. Um, I brought him into the Sally studio and put 10, 12 people in the audience, just showed him when to go home base, when not to it. And I did all that with him. And he just, you know, he he, uh, he and I were inseparable. And he was, uh, and everybody, the whole staff, everybody loved him. He did not have an enemy. And he was- He's a great really, guy. And I used to say, if you, want to, if you want to find Jerry, he'll be in a restaurant by himself reading War and Peace. I mean, that's who he was. He just was a- Great guy, great father, great grandfather. He just had a, a you know, grandchild. That's the first thing I thought of when he passed away. Right? Yeah, I we can't like, believe it. We had him. And I know. When day day day. Day. You know, I th and I've thought about this a lot because every time I would ask him to do something, um, he'd always say, yeah, sure, I'll call you back. And I don't think he ever turned me down, ever. But this time when I called him, he did not say, I'll call you back. He said, okay, when do you want to do it? So I don't know. Maybe he knew. I don't know. Um, but I will tell you this much. He was incredible to me. We were best of friends, and um, it, it, a shame he sh yeah. left much too early. Yeah, just yeah. All right. On that note, let's take a quick little break, and we'll come back and get into some DBL. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There we go. DBL. Welcome back. I had to take a water. Yeah. <laughs> But we, these are a good story. I mean, we're not even cracking the surface of we everything. We haven't been to the bathroom once. We're still going. Go ahead. <laughs> and I'm pounding these salts right. water. I'll be very careful with the water. Yeah. <laughs> but let's get into it. I mean, you worked with yeah. so many other people. that You have so many stories, Bert. But we're kind of going on this trajectory of getting into Daily Blast Live, which where we met, obviously. And yes. they brought you on Daily Blast Live because you know how to run shows. You know how to put them together and they wanted to make DBL even better. Right. right. So when you got the call for DBL, were, did you consider yourself retired? Like I'm kind of out of this business now. Or were you always looking for something else to do? No, I did not consider myself the R word. No. <laughs> and, uh, well, you've no, done I, so much. I, I just know, figured know, you love I it. No, but hey, listen, anybody that calls this work yeah, I know. is insane. We're not exactly lifting up cement outside. I mean, this True. is not heavy lifting. I mean, what we do, Every day, we are lucky, we are blessed to be able to do this. But um, I had, listen, I never had a list of places that I was going to go to. But if I had a list, I'm not sure Denver would have been on the list. Not, nothing gets both. Denver, but who knew from Denver? So I was called, to, yes, I was called to do it. They um, obviously wanted to change things. Right. And um, uh, the show started out more of, of focusing a lot on the internet and, and all that stuff. And I knew at least... In my gut, that that probably wasn't going to work, only because 
younger people are now home watching television. Sure. Mm-hmm. And and they're not watching it anyway. Watch it on their phone or whatever they're doing. So um, I came in and we I, I remember vividly sitting with you and Sam and Tori and, and Al and Erica and Erica. Yeah, and Erica at that it's Italian restaurant. Well, there's probably more brand... Brandon was on at the time too. No, right? Oh, they no, weren't there yet. No, okay. they weren't there. Yeah, and I remember I had been watching the show at home for three months. Okay, and about to put a gun to my head because <laughs> I had to watch all those hours. The show was on for many hours, which is we yeah we used that. to film yeah. what four and a half yeah. hours yeah. live a day. I know that was crazy. Yeah, and uh, so I had to watch all of them. Like one was going to be different than the other. It was always it was all the same. And um, when I sat, I remember sitting with you guys like it was yesterday. And I had all these notes, and um, I remember Lisa said to me because I don't. We planned at Lisa Credos said to me, um, or no, or one of you guys said to me, "Do you have any notes? Anything that you could tell us?" And because you guys knew me through Sam, right? I knew Sam from CNN. She was my co-host and Dr. Drew Pinsky, and so I was sort of forced at that moment, without being prepared, to tell you guys what I thought. We uh, needed it, y- yeah, yeah. But I was careful, certainly, and. The important part was, because I think the change was, the big change was, is that we were going to talk about important stories and and, and you guys had a brain in your head and, and you and we we're going to talk about good, important things. And that's what we came up. We we're going to talk about, what you, what, what's you saying, uh, the expression? Um, we're talking which about, about what you're talking, talking about? Yeah, and we did. Yeah. And we did. And you guys were unbelievable. I mean, amazing at, at doing it. And that's what I remember. And then we just went from there and took off and everything Right, and as the years went on, I mean, Bert, you were amazing. I learned so much from you just as a host and correcting me in your gentle manner because I'm, you know, a little rough around the edges. <laughs> you, you were rough around the edges? No, no, correcting you in my in my gentle manner. Jeff, Jeff, shut the hell up. <laughs> Which is the way I need to be talked to, to be honest with you. You know, everybody's different. Yeah. That, you know. Jeff would get home from work. I'm like, how was the show today? Bert called me on the way over from work, told me I need to tone it down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, uh, but I've said this before. Without Jeff, I, I, we wouldn't have had, a, had as good a show because Jeff thought a little differently than everybody else yeah. thought, and that's what you needed in the way we were doing the show. Though. Right when they first started the show, it didn't matter. Right. We were sort of doing the same stuff. Yeah, Go ahead, I'm sorry. but no, 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 I just, I'm just wondering because we've talked. If you caught last week's episode as well, we kind of went through your whole career, like from the '60s till now. I mean, you know, your early years. 70s. 70s, what I was talking about was your 60s. Were, well, when did you go see Bubba to my 90? I was, t- <laughs> I was t- That's what I'm talking about. Uh, well, that's like, part of your career, your journey. T- Excuse me, I have to take my teeth out and put them on me. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to take another break. Bert has to take his medicine. No, I, <laughs> no we're staying. But uh, I just, I mean, from how much has this business changed? Because people don't know, we're a successful show. Daily Blast Live mm-hmm. is a successful show, mm-hmm. but, you know, things happen in this business, as you know. But what, I mean, I, I just, I don't know how to wrap my head around it, that when you have a successful show, why would it get canceled? Is that too general? No, no. First of all, when you work for a big corporation, right? we're not the most important thing that in that big corporation. Tegna is a news organization. That's where they focus their time, their money, and their energy. And um, money is very tight now in all corporations, not just Tegna, right. the economy, et cetera. And I don't know of any company, I don't think you guys do either, that's not cutting back. Everybody's cutting back. And that's what happened with us. We were part of a, you know, part of a cutback. Um, we were doing fine. I mean, we weren't doing great everywhere, but enough places we were doing fine. And unfortunately, shows get canceled. Right. They don't go on forever. This particular show is very unique. Um, unique for me, unique for all of us, because here we are in Denver. The way it used to be is you'd get another job and you'd go where you went. Right. Nobody wants to leave Denver. Nobody. It's, it's amazing. And I understand it. I understand it. Having come from you know New York and then L.A. and now here, and we are a close-knit group. And is but which is very rare, very rare that like everybody like when Jeff came home, he walked in. Okay, so when Jeff found out people were coming in town, he's like, "Oh, I think it might be a good thing." I go, "Yeah, that doesn't sound very good." Not to be negative, I go, "I think you guys are getting canceled." He goes, <laughs> "No," really he that? said that. Yeah. Did I know? And Jeff yeah. goes, "No, no way. We're doing good. They yeah. just we had our meeting. We're doing good." I go, "Yeah." 
I think you're getting canceled. So I was at a fair, a county fair with the boys. And I go, just text me, Jeff, kind of let me know. He's during the meeting. And he goes, text and said, not good. And I was like, oh, gosh. I go, it's exactly what I thought. So uh, for all of y'all, everybody at the studio, Sharon, oh, Sharon, what is her role? Is she a producer? Sharon? No. On no. the, I don't know, whatever Sharon does in the. Um... She gets their guests. So when the guests come in digitally, she'll like line them all up, okay, you know, well, and do technical she... stuff behind the scenes. Sharon at David Last Life came up to me the other day. She goes, I'm going to start crying. And then I instantly, I start crying. I was like, and this is when I'm supposed to go on with Sam and Dr. Coley. Oh, oh, so oh, okay. I haven't done my segment yet. Yeah. And I'm like, you got to go away. Yeah, like, yeah, you got to yeah, go yeah. away. Yeah. And she's like, I remember you bringing Lawson in here with the stroller. And now Lawson's going to be eight. And then I got all teary-eyed because I started thinking of the beginning with Sam. And when she had Sophie... And I think that's why everybody's so tight. Like, you just think everybody's kind of been through getting married, pregnant. That's right. You know, and everybody respects each other. Jeff and I, we've said this before. I've been on other sets with him back in L.A. And you can feel the tension. People don't like each other. But as soon as that camera goes on, it's like, hey. We won't name names. but Yeah, no, we're not. Um, But you can tell people don't like each other. And then it's just super fake with y'all. It's real, and I can never, I'll never forget, Jeff, you walked in after the sun's, they told you the sun was setting for the show. Sunday. <laughs> cancel this now, it's sun nice. setting. Yeah, I know. Just say it's canceled, and you were crying, you had tears in your eyes, and then you go, I can't even look at Bert, and you just started crying. We, we all did. And you know, then yeah, it was rough. Wait, and then I felt bad, and I was like, this is really sad. And then I was like, okay, well, Here's, I went and bought him an expensive bottle of tequila, and I said, drink this all weekend. It was Father's Day weekend. Not the best to tell you guys. And I was like, drink this and get drunk all weekend, cry, get it out, and then get back, put on your big boy pants. But let me tell you, it's funny you talk about this. It's so important in this, in this business, in this world, that we have mates that support us. Because yes. it's the worst. Well, um, I don't have any problem. Lynn, you know, is very supportive. You, supportive. It's it's a rough one. This is a rough one um, for all of us. And I, I mean, look, we, we would all take less money to do it. In Absolutely, a minute, I'm sure we all would have. But it's part of the business. It always has been. Um, there are those that would say seven years. You guys are lucky. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good run. Um, but none of us want to leave each other. Um, and it sounds so, as I say it, it sounds so childish in a way, but it's true. We don't. And we hope, hope that maybe we can find another way, another platform, another place for the five of them to be together again. Yes, I am exploring that. And and I, I, those kinds of things are very hard, but you never know. Yeah. You don't know unless you try. And so we're trying that. And the company, we have nothing, there's nothing bad to say about Tegna because they've been extremely supportive, and Brian Weiss, who's our boss, and Lisa Kredas, who was our boss before that, no one was terrible to us. Nobody even took anything really away from us. This, what we do, the syndication world, is not what Tegna does. Mm -hmm. It just isn't what they do. So they did what they had to do. They've got to cut money like other companies. Look, ABC was firing people left and right. All the networks were. Tegna was not doing that. You know, So it came to a point where... Well, I was telling Jeff, I said this last week, so y'all are going to hear this on the other episode. Jeff's like, where did you get that analogy? I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> I, You're a stand-up man. You're a family man. You're a good grandfather, but you're such a good boss, too. Like, you're just, you're not an asshole. Like, you're a good man. And I was telling Jeff, I said, so many people would have, you can retire. You can go on and do your thing, but you're like... I'm driving this ship. I don't remember exactly how I said yeah, it, but I keep. I made mean, this up. Yeah, uh, you're driving. You're the captain of this ship, and you didn't jump ship or get on another boat. You're like, you know what? I'm not leaving my crew behind, and we're getting to our destination, and then figure it out whether it be another show or everybody does their own thing. But you're like, I'm driving this boat to the, our destination. And well, that's I, what I respect. No, and I, I listen. I appreciate that, and I. I had I was offered something recently that would have taken me really away, not in August. We're in August, 
the end of August. Would have taken me for two weeks the end of August. And I, I said to Lynn, I can't do this. I just can't do it. I mean, how am I going to leave? I'll be looked, uh, they'll look at me like I'm crazy and they'll be right. Now I'll look disloyal. And um, thank God I don't have to do it, you know. And so I decided not to do it. It worked out that I didn't, I didn't do it because I could not imagine. It would have been terrible. I mean, I just think about it. You're right. There's probably someone that would have done that. But I, I did. Plus, I love these guys. I love them all. I love you. I love all the, the whole group. And, and those aren't words. You know, you got to back that up. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that on some way, shape, or form, we can do something. You guys have a big live event coming up. And, um, right. We'll hear. Yeah, no, this will air before the event. So make sure you, uh, if you guys don't have tickets, if you want to see this event, tickets are probably sold out now if you want to come to the show live in Denver. But if you go to moment, uh, moment.co, Dot org or dot co? It's dot co. Okay. Moment dot co slash comeback TV, I believe it is. Yeah. I want to get the exact Sam same right. Sam always tags me and I repost what yeah. Sam tags we'll, we'll, me. We'll post it for you. If you want to get virtual tickets to the show that's here live in Denver, August 22nd, you could do that on that. I'll, and I'll put the exact website out there for but you. People but people don't just realize out that. there how hard it is to get, like when a show ends, people are like, oh, Jeff will just get another job. I'm like, no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. It's not. Especially with this economy. No, that's but it's right. not the old days either. It's you know, not. when shows were developing all the time, and you had relationships like you talked about earlier. Those days are gone, and I'm wondering yeah. what's the future for daytime. Well, I TV? think daytime is floundering now. Um, you know, you've got Kelly Clark, you you Jennifer Hudson, and um, Caramo, and but nobody. I think Kelly Clarkson is doing fairly, pretty well. She's got a good executive producer, Alex Duda, by the way. Who I have to mention, she's a great lady. Remember, talk soon. Yes. Oh, I love talk soon. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's hard to figure it out now because, and I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but in the earlier days, in the 80s and 90s, remember when I started Sally and Jerry, nobody knew who they were. So you didn't have to pay them a lot of money. Now, eventually, yes. But at the beginning, to get it going, you didn't have to. Now, when you hire a Kelly Clarkson or a Jennifer, you got big money. You got to pay big money, which means you got to make big money. Right. You got to make it back. It's now very difficult to make that back. First of all, uh, everything is, is all over the place now with streaming, so you don't have as big an audience watching. You can, it's all over the place. So it's, it's become difficult, and people are trying to figure it out. Um, I'm of the opinion that if you put something really, really good on, people will find you. You just need time to do that. And uh, that's what I'm hoping maybe well, happens. You guys with have your base. You guys yes, have we have a base. Hard years, like building that base, and days. I personally don't think daytime television's gone because you still have gone. your older people. My grandma's in her eighties, and she watches when she's cleaning. She's watching um, soap operas. Still. Yeah, yeah. People are still watching. I was, soap operas I was in a meeting this morning. I was in a meeting this morning, and someone in the meeting said, "Oh, my mother or my grandmother loves TBL. Oh, my, started to quote." All this stuff. And I, I think when you said it a minute ago, once it became real, once it really became real, I mean, you'd see, I mean, I kid Jeff all the time because Jeff can come in happy and a fraction of a second later, he hangs. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, it, it, and I, I will sit with Chris Clark, who's our executive producer, and I will sit with him all the time we're doing the show, and I'll say, what, look over Jeff. He's so pissed off. And, and what he does... Here's what happens to him. His lip goes like, I told him, I told you this the other day. His lip starts to go like this. <laughs> and, and as soon as his lip starts to go like that, uh, he, he will do one of two things. He will either be quiet and pray to God, because I know what he's thinking, that nobody comes to him, hoping that no one will say, or he'll explode and, you know, and just get angry about <laughs> something that is so not important. I mean, you know, and listen, I cannot walk into a restaurant now or anywhere. And somebody holds up a, a little uh, iPad and asks me to tip 10%, 15 20 without thinking of Jeff. Yeah, it's impossible. I I, 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 and I think people in the audience, the same way, they must think Jeff wouldn't pay this, you know. But that's what makes the show so much fun. They know Jeff. They know Sam's going to start being upset because someone killed a fly. Yes. You know, yeah. And, and you, Tori with politics. And, and Tori, who's... I mean, look, we, we joke about Tori, but... Boy, you're not going to find that many people smarter than her. She is smart. I remember one time we, were, we used to do an 815 meeting 
in the uh, in the uh, conference room. Remember that? Remember that? Yeah. And we were doing something about it, the dog show, and all of a sudden she loves she, that she, stupid she dog show. Spurting out all this knowledge about the dog show, I couldn't believe it. And that's when I realized anybody like her is going to work with the New York Times every day. Yeah. Which people don't do anymore. You know, she's very smart. Everybody has their own thing on that on that show right now i feel like he's the mediator he is now yeah. he yeah. didn't start out that way but he's listen this, he's the, to say this about al jackson al jackson is the voice of reason on the show yeah. that makes no sense yeah. he can't run his own life but he can run everybody else's life yeah I mean, he and, talk about and, and one of the sweetest the people in the world uh, yeah. yeah i mean look, i have nothing but positive things to say about not only the people that are sitting at that desk that everybody sees but the people behind that yeah. work so hard. I mean, as good as they are, you know, we got to all work together. To our job is to make them good and or make them better. They're already good, just to make them better. And it's fun. And we don't want it to end. And hopefully, we'll find another place. Yeah. All right. That might be a good place to end. Yeah, I think so. Thanks you for the stories. For it's over. Bert. Yeah. Well, you want to keep going? When I came here, I had a clean, clean shit. I <laughs> told that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did two episodes. I want to tell you, I love you face right. to face, and buddy. I love you too. And uh, if nothing comes of this, I probably will cry. It's par for the course. How you know, Bert. You said the lip when he's mad. Yeah. When you know he's going to cry, the nostrils go down, and the nostrils it gets pointy. Because my friend Louie in Nashville texts me. He goes, Jeff was talking about the show being canceled on air, and he goes, I saw the nose flare, and he goes, That's how you know Jeff's about to. <laughs> Let me. Oh, I need to say this out loud uh, because people think that Jeff only thinks one way and he's all the way over to the right and he's I, I, I get all these no notes from people he's not he's all <laughs> he's open he just wants logic and sense yeah. that's all Jeff wants that's it and without Jeff there would have been no the, the DBL would have been an entirely different show yeah without you, I so. think you pull any of us you know, and it's in the the whole show changes, yes. right? Because yes. we know each other. We're family now. Yeah, and that's that's people on camera and off camera, like yes. you said. But we've learned so much from you. Your stories are legendary. You're a legend in this business, and uh, and I love you. And, and I, I love, love you, buddy. This one. Uh, yeah, you do. I every day he compliments yeah. you. I do, oh, Bert. I do, I do. I want. I read your post. I I, I read all this <laughs> this stuff, and I come in and I I tell Jeff, and I wa watch this. I watch this, and it's. Yeah. I don't watch podcasts. I don't. This one I will watch. Yeah. Uh, yes. So I'm. Right. I'm telling you. People well, if don't, things don't work out, you could come produce our podcast. <laughs> Fine, I'll be here. All right. <laughs> yeah, sleep over there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, love you, buddy. We had some Italian food upstairs, and we'll grab Fine. something to eat. Okay. All right, guys, yeah. thanks for listening. Like I said, if you want to check out that event on August 22nd, just go to the link in my um, Instagram, and it's up there. It's uh, moment.co slash comeback with Erica or something like that. Yeah. It's in there. But, yeah, grab your tickets now if you want to watch that virtually. I'm pretty sure tickets are sold out. But thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. Yeah, and I buddy. hope downloading and i hope you really enjoyed these stories because i if you like this business at all you would have loved these last two episodes yeah, and you'll love bert after watching this. So. well it's over so they already have their decision said after watching this okay don't argue <laughs> we haven't argued but please hopefully do not argue <laughs> Bye, all right guys bye, bye.